In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing one from Ensar Oud, and this is one of his uh, perfume blends rather than just a, like a single oud oil, so to speak. This is Homeros SQ Pure Parfum by Ensar. Um, I've had this for a while and I actually lost the sample and I've had my notes written for like literally months and I just found the sample again. So I thought I'll review it now before I lose it again. <laughs> Uh, but this is one of the longest lasting fragrances I've ever tried. <sighs> wow. So this is... <sighs> Interesting. I'm going to read you the notes that I found for it first. And then I'll kind of give you kind of what I get. It's, it's quite musky. And a, kind of a little bit leathery. And Anyway, let me read you the notes first. Got Neroli, Hinoki, Blue Cypress and Civet in the top with a mid of musk, Georgian rose, orange blossom, osmanthus, and elderflower, with a base of Khmer musk, Tibetan musk in wild Cambodian oud, Sri Lankan sandalwood, Merocke agarwood, bourbon, vanilla, patchouli musk, tolu balsam, oak moss and tobacco, and cacao, with 1970s Mysore sandalwood, Borneo oud resin, SQ Ambergris and Tonkin Musk. I'll read you a little bit of the description from the website. This new rendition, more than two years later, continues the Odyssey theme with several tweaks to its predecessor without undermining the integrity of the profile. The carrier of 99% of perfumes is plain ethanol. Some niche perfumes add minute amounts of musk tincture or ambergris, or rarely both. Homeros goes quadruple the distance with its carrier composed of extinct Tonkin musk, SQ ambergris, and raw argarwood resin, and 70s Mysore sandalwood. And the first things that I get off the bat when I smell it is this powerful, intense, musky quality and leather, like castorium leather. It smells kind of a little bit raw, a little bit animalic, like brown leather, but with this huge musk smell, this musky, I, it's not, how do I describe it? It's not animalic in the sense that it smells fecal or dirty because it doesn't at all, but it's animalistic in the sense that it smells raw. It's, it's very interesting to kind of smell. It's very powerful, very musty, musky, again, leathery. That's my initial impressions of this. In my notes that I write, a slight subtle sense of kind of a little bit spicy, a little bit resinous, leathery, a feeling of ambergris and musk kind of covering it all together. The deer musk and the ambergris combined. I write in my notes that it was shimmery, almost fresh in the top, kind of ethereal, a little bit fresh. There are elements that remind me of both EO number one and EO number two. EO number one was this kind of leathery, kind of oody leathery concoction. EO two was this very strong kind of uh, deer musk kind of scented perfume. This has got a little bit of elements of both, I would say. Going back to my notes, I get a real sense of leather and castorium com coming through, combining with the musk and the ambergris, giving it this ethereal muskiness very harmonious in terms of the blend of florals that come in a little bit later. You don't really pick them out in the top, I would say. I think the florals in this actually come off a little bit soapy-like, quite clean florals. There's no overly indolic or dirty nuances to the florals. They actually remain quite clean on my skin. After about three hours, I got a combination of ouds with the ambergris and the musk, a little bit of patchouli, and subtle nuances of the cacao notes. Cacao is listed in the notes. I think you do get kind of a slight dark, almost like roasted brown sweet kind of quality. But again, it's kind of confusing to me in terms of am I smelling oud, am I smelling castorium, or am I smelling cacao, or am I smelling all of them? It's very harmonious, it all kind of blends together. But in general, what you can expect is huge deer musk, ambergris, um, leather, castorium, these kind of nuances of 
on my skin, a little bit soapy clean, fresh, slightly sweeter florals that are very pretty, very nice. Still wrapped up in musk and ambergris and the leather. And then as it dries down, a little bit more woody. The oud comes through more, but very, very smooth. There's no kind of real skankiness or dirty qualities. Don't expect anything like a Hindi oud. It doesn't go that way at all. It's not barnyard in the slightest. In my opinion, I personally think it's quite smooth, but it will remind you maybe of elements of EO number one and elements of EO number two, like they've um, kind of blend the best of both, so to speak, but with extra nuances to make it its own thing. But it has that familiar Ensar kind of DNA that you might uh, be familiar with, like I say, from one and two. I think for fans of deer musk and oud and castorium leather, I think you, I think you'll you'll enjoy it. It won't be everyone's taste, it is quite kind of uber niche, kind of luxury and high-end kind of expensive materials. And the price of the perfume obviously is reflected in, in the fact that these are all natural high-end grade materials. And so it doesn't mess around with quality, you, you know, you, you pay for what you get essentially. In terms of performance for this is outrageous. I would say 18 plus hours of longevity on the skin ludicrous it just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes and just goes even more it's i think the deer musk combined with the ambergris is just like the most ridiculous ridiculous fixative i mean it just sticks to the skin like glue so the deer musk i would say is used in a very generous concentration and it provides an absolute you know crazy amount of longevity on the skin so if you like longevity this will certainly give you that in spades. Projection and sillage is quite good, I would say. I think the musk and the, the ambergris just kind of f makes it float around. And yeah, it, people will definitely smell it on you if in the first few hours. Very nice. It's like I say, I'm quite glad that it doesn't have funky nuances. It's not uh, dirty. There's a quality to it as it starts to dry down. There's a, there's a phrase that's used in the kind of the oud circles where they talk about brain buzz, like a brain buzz when you smell kinam or, you know, those kinds of high-end ouds that it kind of does something to your brain or you get this kind of fuzzy feeling in your, in your brain. And when you smell this as it's drying down, that combination of musk, ambergris, oud, you do get kind of a, it kind of shuts your brain up I can't really explain it very well, but your mind goes quiet and you just go kind of, you kind of lose all your kind of thinking about things and you, it's, it cuts through all that and you're like, wow. Um, I think any blends that have these kind of higher combinations of these kinds of materials have that kind of effect personally. I think this kind of perfumery isn't everyone's personal taste because it doesn't smell, how do I say it? It doesn't smell like a Parfums de Mali, you know, or Roja Dove, these kinds of, you know, while well, they're not really, they're not really comparable. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the more mainstream perfumes that people enjoy and are familiar with. This isn't gonna give you the same vibe because this uses a whole other level of material, basically. Like Roger, Roger Dove just doesn't compare in terms of raw materials to brands like Ensar and, and all those kind of artisanal brands like, you know, a Russian Adam, a Rouge Lodore, a Bortnikov, like all these kinds of people, they just use better materials basically. So, but the way they smell, because this is like very heavily natural, you kind of have to have an acquired taste for those kinds of materials, I would say. You can smell that it's high quality that's um, you know a good thing when you're spending that much. You can kind of you can tell it's you know it's it's that good basically in terms of there's no doubting when you smell the quality of something, uh, and that is you know it smells expensive. That's it. That's my full review of Homeros by Ensa Oud. If you've tried it, uh, let me know your thoughts, and I will see you soon with some more videos. Take care, everyone. Bye. One time he disappeared for oh, two or three days. When he came back, they, they asked him where he'd been, and he said, oh, just sailing. <laughs>